Hello everybody, my name is Budley Neck and it's time for another Mods of the Week. This week's shout out goes out to Pulsar Beam. I missed you guys too and I am very glad to be back. I've got seven fantastic mods to go over, let's get to them. Unwrecked Ships is a very simple mod that just adds a little more continuity to Minecraft. Have you ever found it odd that your worlds are full of shipwrecks, but there isn't a single unwrecked ship to be found? This mod fixes that by adding unwrecked versions of shipwrecks. This is such a simple idea that truly keeps a vanilla feel and can be used with forge, fabric, or even just with a data pack. Sorcerium is a new magic mod that keeps things simple, fun, and beautiful. The developers have opted to make everything in this mod available simply through crafting. That means no complicated rituals required. Each spell added is contained in a wand or a staff. The more powerful the spell is, the more complicated the crafting recipe is, and you need a higher level of sorcery to use it. To level up your sorcery, all you have to do is kill mobs with whatever wands or staves you have. I like that they've added a leveling system and put level requirements on the spells. For me, this makes me feel more like I've earned that extra power, and it gives me something to work towards. It also prevents people from coming in day one and skipping right to the end game stuff. Most of the recipes require that you find some of the crystals added by this mod, which can be found underground in clusters, or some are more rare and can only be found in tree trunks. And as you can see, as you get further along in the mod, recipes get pretty complicated, so you're definitely gonna wanna use JEI or REI to help out with those. This mod also adds a few new mobs to the game. The Wandering Chest will follow you around and store your items for you. Gargoyles are statues that will come to life and defend their area when monsters are near. Nature elements are able to be summoned using the nature staff and will help defend you in combat. Wisp orbs are a small friendly creature that will follow you and help regenerate your mana faster. There's also the mod's mascot, Boguslav the Sorcerer. Currently, he doesn't do anything and I don't even know if there's a way to spawn him into survival, but he is adorable and definitely worth mentioning. The mod adds a new method of transportation in the form of a rideable broom, along with many, many very nice looking decorative items and blocks. This is already a fairly large mod and I've barely touched on what's available and the developers are still actively updating it. If you like magic and Minecraft and wanna keep it simple, this mod is definitely worth a try. Currently, Convenient Decor only adds a few new items to the game, but everything added looks fantastic, and some introduce some useful new game mechanics. Currently, it adds five placeable tools. These can be placed in a few different ways so you can tell the story that you want to tell with your world. Maybe they were in a hurry and threw it on the ground, or maybe they took the time to lean it up against a pile of leaves. It also adds a watering can that can be filled and enchanted with infinity on an anvil. If you use the watering can on farmland, it permanently hydrates the farmland, and the infinity enchantment means it will never run out of water. And now on to what I think may be the coolest feature of this mod are the hay piles and leaf piles. Not only do they look great, but players can walk through them while monsters can't. This is a very cool feature that could come in handy a lot. And if that's not enough, they also prevent fall damage. Obscure Tooltips brings a little more style to Minecraft's GUI by updating and customizing the tooltips. As you can see, it adds a border that can change per item, showing information about the physical properties or the rarity of the item. And it has a very cool spinning 3D representation of the item that you're looking at. While these alone are cool enough features to add this mod, as you can see on the mod's CurseForge page, the developer has made it easy to customize your tooltips to show even more information on items, including modded information like set bonuses and abilities. Oh My Goat aims at making goats a little more useful by adding some new goat-related animals, blocks, and features to Minecraft. Let's start off with the Ram Block, which can be combined with a piston to break blocks. This could be useful in so many redstone farms and get rid of the need for TNT duping. Out of curiosity, I tried to enchant the ram block. I was able to enchant it on an anvil, but it doesn't seem to have any effect right now. 
The ram block can also be used to damage and knock back mobs. Moving on to the barbaric helmet, it has the same amount of armor as an iron helmet, also provides some knockback resistance, and looks pretty amazing. It also gives the player a strength and speed boost if you find yourself low on health, hopefully allowing you to make a hasty retreat. This mod also allows you to breed goats with sheep to make jeeps. Jeeps can't breed with themselves, the only way you can make them is by breeding a goat and a sheep, but they are very useful. You can shear them, milk them, and when killed, they drop Shevin, which is goat meat. And if you have this mod installed, goats also drop goat meat when killed. And in case you were wondering like I was, Jeeps can't be dyed or saddled. Structury Towers adds immersive biome-themed towers to Minecraft. Currently, there are 21 types spread throughout your worlds, each beautifully designed and decorated and loaded with useful loot and blocks. Each tower is themed in one way or another. Some simply match the biome that you'll find them in, like the Great Toadstool and the Sea Pillar, while others are themed more towards lore, telling the story of those who have come before you, like the Engineer Tower. As you can see, this is loaded with redstone blocks and loot just like you would expect engineers to have, and they even have books that tell some of their story. This mod is compatible with the Fabric Waystones and the Waystones mod, which means you'll find a waystone in the chest at the top of most of the towers if you have those mods installed. And while most of the variations can be found in the overworld, they have included some in the Nether and End as well. Personally, I really like this upside down tower in the Nether a lot. It's always nice to stumble across structures while exploring your Minecraft worlds, and these are some well-designed and thought-out towers that have enough variation to be visually pleasing and not get boring, and the developers have spread them out nicely so your world won't seem oversaturated with them. Currently, this is only for Fabric Forge and Quilt, but the developer says they have a data pack version coming out, which means you'll be able to use these in vanilla Minecraft or on bucket servers and things like that. Pack It Up is a new backpack mod that adds an array of bags ranging from simple backpacks to specialized storage packs that can hold an extremely large number of items of a given type. To get started in this mod, you need to craft yourself a pack bench. Next, we'll craft ourselves a frame and a bag and use the pack bench to combine them. This gives us our regular backpack and this is the first step to create any of the bags introduced by this mod. Now to upgrade your backpack, all you need to do is put your current pack in the frame slot and your upgraded bag in the bag slot. And when we take out our new upgraded pack, the bench even returns the old bag. Very cool. And we can downgrade backpacks in exactly the same way. Now to quickly go over the bags, the regular backpack has two rows of regular storage, the large backpack has four, and the extreme backpack has six. As you get to the more specialized packs, they can only hold items of a certain type, but they generally allow for stacks four times the normal size. This means stacks of 256 for most stackable items and stacks of four for normally unstackable items. The tool pack is a little bit different. It doesn't allow stacking, but it has seven rows of storage that can hold any damageable item. And the ender pack is a link to your ender storage. There are also three types of armor packs, iron, golden, and netherite. These are enchantable just like chest armor and can be worn in the chest slot. They range from two to four rows of storage and increase the armor values, toughness, and enchantability just like you would expect. And while you're wearing them, you can take a look inside of your armor backpacks using a hotkey. For me, by default, this was the B key. All of the specialized packs require a large or extreme backpack as a base item in the pack bench, and all the packs can be stored in shulker boxes, increasing your portable storage by a crazy amount. And that is all the time we have for this episode. I want to thank you so much for watching. I need to give an extra big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Their names are up on the screen right now. Thank you guys so much. I also wanted to let you guys know that we recently reset the Budley Neck public server. It is running a fabric mod pack with the create mod and some custom origins with the origins mod. 
If you're looking for somewhere to play, there's some very cool people playing there. It's completely free. There's nothing you can pay for. It's just a place to hang out and have fun. All the information you need to connect is down in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Keep playing, keep having fun. We'll see you guys next time.